We're going to make the biggest enforcement changes to the Buy America Act in 70 years. Right now, if you manufacture a vehicle, I expect you guys know about that, that gets purchased by the federal government, the law says that, that and there's about 600,000 vehicles the federal government owns, by the way, and replaces and buys, that substantially all that vehicle, substantially all, should be made in America. But because of loopholes over time, you know what substantially all means today? If 55 percent of it was made in America, you can go ahead and get all the rest of it purchased other places. To me, 55 percent is not substantially all. It's barely half. And this is actually a double whammy. First, 55 percent is not high enough. And second, contractors don't have to tell us the total domestic contact of their products. They just have to tell us that they hit the threshold. Nobody checking. Well, they got a new sheriff in town. We're going to be checking. No, I'm serious. I am deadly earnest. Today, I'm directing the Budget Office to issue a rule to raise the amount of domestic contact required to be considered made in America from 55 percent to 75 percent. Substantially all is going to mean substantially all. And starting with critical products, instead of taking contractors at their word that they've hit the threshold, we're going to start making them give us the details so that we can do more to support American manufacturing. We want to be the ones making the innovative parts of every product, the ones that will support more jobs and more small businesses. For example, I had a tour today, a lovely lady showing me in the parts where the second stop we made. She said, but we're having a little problem. We're finding we don't have the computer chips that we need to go into the end, et cetera. We basically don't make them anymore in America. So I got together with a group of 20 Republicans and Democrats. We passed a new piece of legislation providing that <coughs> South Korea and, and Taiwan open up plants here in the United States, hiring American employees to make those computer chips so we're not held hostage. And in case you haven't noticed, not only you, but Ford Motor Company said they're going to have to stop producing certain vehicles. They couldn't get the chips, couldn't get the wafers. And so I'm directing my budget office to create new rules for critical pro uh, products where we know we need stronger, more resilient domestic supply chains. We're talking about components like semiconductors, pharmaceutical ingredients, advanced batteries, among other things. We saw during the early days of the pandemic that the supply chain disruptions could put Americans' lives and livelihoods at risk. When we needed the most, we were short on protective equipment, we were short on ventilators and other essential health equipment. We couldn't get the job done. We couldn't take care of people. We were short on basic equipment. I know a lot of you in this factory stepped up to make PPE at the time. That was a noble service, but it's not a long-term solution. Yes, we'll keep trading with our allies, but we need to have a resilient supply chain of our own so that we're never again at the mercy of countries for critical goods ever again, ever. You know exactly what I'm talking about right here. You've seen production slow down, as I said. You've had your hours cut because of the shortage of computer chips and semiconductors. These chips are more than just vehicles. They enable so much of our modern lives, our smartphones, our televisions, our medical equipment. That's why we're investing $50 billion to have the best chip manufacturing in the world come and build factories in the United States of America.